Hello, my name is Patrick Payne from Zoomasys. Today we're going to go over the PIC file system, which is our fourth video in the PIC multivalue series. If you haven't caught the first three videos, please visit PICMultivalue.com. All right, let's get started. The most important thing we're going to do here is explain how PIC stores information. And PIC is quite a bit different if you're coming from an understanding of databases. In fact, what I want you to think is your file system. And the first thing we're going to say is, what is a file system? Um, on your computer, that is where you store things. So it's going to be your file browser. If you're on a Windows computer, it's your C drive or a USB drive. On a Mac, it's a file explorer. You're all used to a file system. PIC is unique in that, A, it had a file system because it came out of the 60s and had to have a file system. And it introduced a file system that's somewhat like what you're used to. Where it's very unique is that it actually stores all your information from a database standpoint in that file system. And it basically allows you to use your file system as a database. And that helps you understand as you've been given this PIC system and you're wondering how and why it's doing certain things. This helps explain what PIC is doing and it helps you understand the data you're trying to get at. So let, what I want to first get into is Let's look at your system, and what I want to show you is how you would organize data. If you were on your PC and you were to organize your business, how would you normally do it? And the way you would normally do it is you would open up your file system. So what you see here now is my file explorer for my computer. And if I wanted to organize a business I was doing, quite often what you would do is go in here and create a folder to organize your data. So we'll just go in here and say, let's create a new folder. And in this case, it's going to be my business called Acme. In a PIC system, you often hear this term, an account. This is the same thing. It's how we organize our common business items. And so when you hear the word account from a PIC system, just think a folder. It's a folder that's organizing common items. So what we'll do is we'll now go into our Acme folder. And I have a series of customers. So what would I do? I would go in and create a folder called customers. In a PIC system, this is the same thing. Inside our folder or our account, we would create another folder called customers. Same concept. And as we go into the customer folder, we would then start storing records or files, however we're going to call them, inside this directory or this folder one for each customer. So let's say, for example, we chose to use Excel. Everyone's used to Excel. So we would go in and create a separate Excel document for each one of my customers. And so the first thing I do is, is open up my Excel. And we're going to start creating a document. And this is where it really explains what PIC is doing, is that as I start to build my Excel document, it is of my design. I create a design of how I'm going to store my customer data. And in this example, I'm going to go into A1, you know, your first column here in Excel, and I'm going to put the name of my customer. And I'm going to use my own name here. And then on line two, I'm going to store their address. And then their city, and then their state. And then here on line seven, I'm going to say, are they active? or not active. Now you'll notice this being Excel, you're, you're questioning, hey, you didn't put any field names, you didn't put column headers. Again, in Excel, I don't have to, and in PIC, you don't. But this does represent exactly how PIC stores information. Again, it's a account, a file, and then records or items inside that directory or that folder. So in this case, we're now gonna save it. So we'll say file, save as, and we're going to go over to our directory and we're going to save it. So here's our account, our customer file. And what do we have to do? When we actually are storing these Excel documents, we have to come up with a name. And it might be the customer code. I might choose to use the person's name. This is something you have to think about. And it's the same thing in a PIC system. As we store things, they always get a, a name and you as a developer have to come up with what that is and it needs to stay unique. In this case, we are going to use the name. And to make this work, 
for the full demonstration, we're going to tell this to store it as a text file versus an Excel file. And then we're going to give it a name. In this case, we're going to just call it Patrick Payne. And we will save it. We can now go up to our file browser and you'll see a file in there called Patrick Payne. Again, this is how you would normally organize stuff. And this is exactly how PIC stores it. And, and PIC has all the same things, which is there is nothing that you're used to from a database at this standpoint. It is just folders with records or files stored in those folders. And you as a developer can put anything you want to. In fact, I can right now in this folder put a PDF in there or put a Word document in there. It, it then kind of clutters up my organization. Um, what PIC does is you can treat this as a database as long as you stay consistent on what you're doing. So if I choose to now store a second customer, I can go in here to my Excel document and say, well, for my second person, it's Bob Smith. And I am going to make him inactive. Notice that we're keeping the fields all consistent. Line one is still name, line two is still this. This is where PIC lets you treat this as a database if you stay consistent on what you're doing. I will then go in and say, hey, let's save this as a different record and say it is Bob Smith. And there you go. This is the fundamentals of what PIC is as a storage system. And it's why it's significantly different than a database you're used to, be it SQL Server or anything else. It allows you to store this in there, but you saw that a few things. I didn't describe my data anywhere. And this is why sometimes PIC systems are very difficult because somebody on a piece of paper somewhere has scribbled down that one is supposed to be this, two is supposed to be that. But you can see the, the power. I can go and add fields to my records. I can, I can do very creative things with the system with this design, the same way you can do that with your current file system. So now I've done this, you haven't seen me touch PIC at all. But what I'm now gonna show is with that structure, I can bring up JBase, which integrates tightly with the, uh, the operating system and lets me natively use these directories. And you can see where PIC, because it maps so close to this model, can actually use these structures and it shows you exactly that it looks like a PIC database now. So what I'm going to do is open up a command prompt. We will cd over to our Acme directory. And we'll do a directory. And right there we can see the same customer directory we did there. We can go into customers and do a directory and there's our items. That's, this is all from DOS. But if we go back to Acme, which remembers our account, and pick, and we launch into JBase, we can now do a list files and it sees the customer folder that we created as a PIC database. And we can now say list customers, and it's listed that thing just as if it's a database. And I can right here say list items, which will list the entire record of customers. And it'll list both records and you see it lists them out. And it, and it numbers them the same way you saw in Excel. This is why I like to use Excel as a as a good example of how PIC operates, as you can see that what we call attributes are really these lines in Excel. So line one is the first name, line two is the street, line three is this. And even though I built this stuff all in Excel, here is PIC seeing it. And, and remember I said PIC lets you use your operating system, your file system, as a database. So what we're going to do here now is say list customers and list just the first attribute and the second attribute and you can see that PIC is now treating this just like a database and I can do normal database operations like I said I can say hey select customers with a1 equal to and I can say let's just look for Bob and it it found Bob so you know it was really important to show that you know, this is what PIC is doing and why it's so different. And because we weren't required to describe any of our data, this is why quite often you struggle with, well, how do I get last name? How do I get loan amount? How do I get this? This is, this is quite often why. But I, hopefully that makes you understand how PIC is storing information. 
So now I want to go in and, and, and review quickly what we just showed. And on this slide, you can see what PIC calls something and how its comparable name is within your file system. So if you hear the word account, that's really a folder. And in this example, it's Acme. If you hear the word file, and this is probably the most confusing thing, is that what we call a file is usually called a folder in most systems. What PIC calls an item or a record is often called an item or maybe a file in your file system. But let's not use that word because it gets confusing. It's an item. It's an item in that folder. So then you hear other terms in PIC, which is, hey, a dictionary. A dictionary is just another file that's tied to another folder that's tied to, a, to another folder. You'll hear things like programs. Well, programs are just a file we created, a folder called programs, and we put code in it. See, again, it's just like your storage system. You can store whatever you want in those items. Only database items where we're consistent are really used in a database way. So with that being said, let's talk about describing your data. In PIC, we have something we call a dictionary, and it's an optional companion file to any other file where we go in and describe our data. And again, it's very similar to Excel here where it was optional. I could optionally create those field names in Excel, but it was an option. And so we create that and we start describing our data. So we can use nicely named fields versus asterisk A1 or asterisk A7. So in this case, I'm going to actually do this from, from PIC. We're going to go and say, hey, create a file called uh, Dictionary of Customers. And it's created a new file. Now again, we go up to our File Explorer and we look in our Acme folder, we'll see a customer bracket D file now, which is our dictionary for the customer file. And what we will do is go into that file and create a field that describes our data. And, and we'll create an item for each one that we want to describe. So we know name is at the first position, right? So we'll say, let's create in the dictionary of the customer file, field called name. And we also had one for status, right? So let's create one for status. And here we're using the, the built-in editors, which are really no different than being in Excel and, and building the lines. And we are gonna create what's called an A-type dictionary. I don't, we'll have further videos that'll get more detail about dictionaries. This is for demonstration purposes. We're gonna use an A-type. And what we do is we say on, on attribute two, we describe what position. And each type of dictionary will have a different schema on what you do here. But we'll say, hey, we want to show line one. We want to put this on the screen. We want to left justify it and make it 15 characters wide. Status, another A item. That's field seven. And we will make that right justified in five characters. And now we can list our customer file, listing name and status, and now we have nicely named fields we can use. So this is what dictionaries are about. Um, again, they're optional, which is what's frustrating sometimes with a PIC system, and they have a lot of power in them. And so just like Excel columns, we can create computed dictionaries that do math, just like almost anything you do in a formula in Excel, you can do here in these dictionaries. And even worse, we, we may have multiple dictionaries that point at the same piece of data to display it in different ways. Perhaps all upcase, maybe concatenating a first and last name together, maybe chomping a name down and only showing the first two letters. So, so that's the frustration of dictionaries. And this is where it's a lot, a big difference to Excel is that, uh, to, uh, to SQL, and that you always have a defined dictionary for every piece of data. In PIC, you don't. Okay, so now we've shown you how PIC is storing information in a general overview. Um, important item here is that this is not really how your PIC system will look. Your PIC system has its own custom file system for doing this stuff. So the same way when we say file system that you're talking a FAT32 or a NTFS or an EXT3, these are all technical terms for different computers. Your PIC platform has its own high-speed driver for doing these items. 
and that's where your data is actually stored. But everything is stored and works exactly the same way that I was just showing, and all PIC systems can map down and do the data this way. And often you'll see these uh, used when you are sharing information between your PIC system and your uh, normal system. And it's usually where you're writing out CSV files and sharing items. Um, one of the big reasons for this is that the native files add things like indexing, triggers, um, large file support, high level performance items. And this is pretty normal within this space. Um, PIC is a document database and another very popular document database such as Mongo. These items would be called the, the, uh, the Wireshark file system or the Grid file system. So all these databases have their own personal ones and based on your PIC platform, you'll see ones that require you to size the files to systems like QM and JBase, which will have dynamic files. There's multiple different options within this space. So I didn't want you to be surprised if you went and looked at your PIC system and was, was questioning why you couldn't see it directly from your C prompt. So this was an overview of the PIC file system. If you'd like to learn more about PIC or watch other videos in this series, please visit PICMultivalue.com. My name is Patrick Payne from Zoomasys. Thank you for watching.